This is Twit. We should talk about the little unit you have behind you. Oh, Oscar Vermeulen is awesome. <laughs> this this all started with Steve and his blinking lights uh, right over his uh, left shoulder there. Those are, P, what's that, PDP-8, right? PDP-8, which was my first computer. That's what I encountered when I was in high school. One of the teachers in the Math Resource Center said, Hey, uh, Steve, I think there's a company over in San Carlos that uh, you might want to check out. And, you know, this was, I mean, this was when... Bill Gates ha was at a school, he was in high with, school. More with more money than mine. Yeah, we were both in high school. Uh -huh. uh, his ha He had a computer in his school. We had no computers in our school. This was 1971. Um, but it was so it was just beginning to happen. Yet this company, Technica Education Corporation, they were in the business of beginning to put little time-sharing systems in schools in elementary and high schools and and beginning to teach programming so then it was uh they had pdp8s and also uh little hp mini computers um anyway that was it was where i first encountered a, an actual computer and learned assembly language and as all our listeners know i just stuck with that <laughs> because if it's not broke it anyway, worked pretty good yeah uh, it worked really well so uh yeah so the machines behind me are PDP eights, uh, which is a 12 bit machine and it, and, and, and deck sold digital equipment corporation sold a bunch of them. Like, I mean, like really it was a, it was a very popular solution because they were inexpensive. And at the time you needed things to like run laboratory equipment and collect data and do little databases. And, and everybody was kind of a programmer because there was no ready-made software really it was just you know here's your computer good luck and it came with manuals like here's the instruction set and so it was you know a very different era back then but that that, that thing even though there was an operating system os8 created for it um the it came with 4k 4k of core memory and because it was expensive it, back then Oh my goodness! You didn't, you yes, didn't put in unnecessary memory. It just cost no, a lot. No, four four K. Well, and twelve bits can only access four K. Oh, remember that ten bits is one thousand. Well, ten uh, ten bits is ten twenty four. Twelve bits is four thousand ninety six. That's all you can access is four K. Now, that was such a problem that they did sort of the equivalent of what Microsoft and the, you remember the EMS deal where you could add some additional. They, they had a, a banking system as, as in memory banks, where, which allowed you to have an additional three bits for instructions and additional three bits for data. So you could have you could have your instruction. So so you could still the instruction pointer was still only 12 bits. So 4K. But th this it sort of extended in a in a in a bank the additional uh, an additional three bits that brought you all the way up, Leo, to 32K. Ooh. So oh my God, what could you ever? You're never going to use all that much memory. <laughs> Well, not if you so, keep writing an assembly language, you probably but, wouldn't. <laughs> well, and you could do like real work with you know four or eight you know oh, yeah. k of, yeah. of memory. Anyway, so the problem was it really was a little underpowered. The machine that put Deck on the map they they sold a ton of PDP eights, but it was the PDP eleven. That was a a sixteen bit machine. And these are all, you know, we're all used to hex now. Hex, you know, like, which is to say grouping our binary bits in groups of four bits. So you have zero through nine and then A through F. Well, these machines were all octal. We hadn't figured out yet that, that octal was wrong. And so everything was zero to seven and grouping in sets of three. So that worked well for a 12-bit machine because you just had four groups of three. Um, it doesn't work so well for a 16-bit machine because you could do five groups of three, 
but that's only 15 bits. So you had to end up with like the first, the, the, the top one being either a zero or a one. But still, it was an octal-based machine. That's the PDP-11, which is what you and I both have. Um, you know, I'm, you know, here's mine, and you've got yours. Here's mine, yep. yeah. And, uh, and this is and thanks to a crazy Swiss, <laughs> Oscar Vermeulen, right? Yep. He's the guy who did yep. your replicas that are behind you, and now he's moved and so, on. Right. So, so as we were sort of talking about this when we were talking about it before, they are. It's actually based on a Raspberry Pi, which gives it more memory than any PDB eleven ever dreamed of having, and. Uh, but so th so the console is like an I/O peripheral. I mean, it's it's got s the the switch banks and the the blinking lights. And so back then, back in the day, in order to actually load it with software, there you can see a picture with, with the various lights li uh, yeah, lit yeah, up yeah. on on the yeah, console. Yeah. Back then, you would you would. They, these machines had core. There were later P 11s that had that had um, uh, RAM in them, dynamic me me memory. But the original ones had core memory, so you'd you'd flip the switches up and down uh, to to select a memory location, and then change them again, and then press the or actually raise the deposit switch, which would which would write. That those bits into that address in memory, and it would increment the uh, the um, address pointer, the address counter, so that then the next deposit would automatically go into the suc the, the succeeding address. Um, so you would put and the you would put like um, maybe ten instructions is what you needed. In order to create the tiniest program, which was known as the bootstrap loader, wh wh <laughs> which would read from a paper tape on the 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 KSR thirty three ah. or thirty five, and it would you know, and so you would you would start the program, then you put the tape in, and, and it would just go <laughs> to like suck the, the this tape in, and basically all it was doing was reading from the paper tape. And storing, you know, like much more into memory than you could manually toggle in. So the so-called the bootstrap was the was the just the barest smallest program that you would put in. And many of the actual computers at the time, you know, actually most of us memorized the bootstrap because it was, you know, we were having to toggle it in all the time. Many of the actual machines you would see had them like either handwritten or typed on a little piece of paper on the front panel for people that were a little, you know, lame and needed you know, a, a, a crib sheet in order to remember the instructions in order to key them in. But so that little program would then bring in the next bigger program. And in fact, there was also sometimes a three stage because that second program was still not very sophisticated. So you 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 read that in, and then that would bring in the paper tape loader, and then you'd you know load up that you, you'd run that in order to run in order to like to load the operating system, and it could take two hours to load the operating system. Literally, re feeding in massive rolls or fan fold tape in order to get this thing loaded. The good news is, is it was non-volatile memory. So as long as the system didn't crash or the, no one uh, tripped over the cord while it was running, you could generally keep the OS loaded for weeks at a time before you'd have to go and like load something again. So anyway, uh, the point is that we have little emulations. Basically, it's an emulated PDP-11. And as I, as I mentioned before, Oscar recorded what? Did you plug it in? Yeah, and I turned it on, oh, and look, I've got hey. lights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they're moving. And by the way, my key works. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I can turn it off again. Or maybe it only works once. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty cool. Yeah, they're moving lights. So I, uh, oh, very yeah, cool. I don't even have to program in some blinking lights. <laughs> <laughs> he says, think of it as a either a very expensive front panel for a Raspberry Pi, 
or a, your very own mini. It's running a, a emulator, right? So it's actually running a PDP-11 as if it were a PDP-11. You can log yes, into the, it via the, SSH or... Yeah, can, there is a whole... I mean, and well, and this is... It was on the PDP-11 that Unix was born. That's... I mean, it was... Unix first ran on a PDP-11. It was written uh, first in assembly language. And then, of course, they thought, okay, this is crazy. We need a higher level language. And so that's where C was then... Again, the first C compiler was written in PDP-11 assembly language to compile C, and then they wrote it in itself, and it compiled itself somehow. So I'm just going to uh, leave it right here. This is all I needed perfect. to do. That's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. Yes. It's perfect. It's got some Very demo nice. running. That's awesome. Very, Very nice. Very nice. And uh, thank you, Oscar, for sending these along. And once again, if you are interested, Oscar has made already over a thousand of these, which is kind of mind-boggling. I know a lot. Leo, of our two hundred and two hundred and forty-nine dollars. It's very affordable. I it's mean, that's crazy. Great. If you've got a Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi not included, but they're thirty-five bucks. You got them lying around. Right. I did. Right. Uh, it's a simple thing. Obsolescence. Here's the. I would say, if you Googled obsolescence guaranteed, or even PIDP11, because it's a Pi DP. Apparently, right, you'd probably find it right away. Um, if he had not just built so, it at Wix, it would be easier to find. But okay, so there you go. <laughs> and just so our listeners know, he is now heading toward a PDP ten. Yes, which was the the granddaddy of the deck machines. That was a thirty six bit machine, and it used kind of weird yellow and green coloring, whereas the, the, this is sort of two-tone, like burgundy and, and red. This You can the, see the influence of the L-Cars interface on the Star Trek uh, stuff. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is awesome. So <laughs> I have the source code for Unix. Could I just enter it all in? It's probably already in there. I mean, it, it might be. Uh, 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 I don't know whether have to look in, look it's running it. Unix or uh, running. But but the, there is for the Raspberry Pi all of the deck software. That's so. So it's a full right. PDP right. eleven emulator, and like you know, you could run a, a, a you know like write in a in PDP eleven assembly language, or they've got compilers and you know Fortran and and C and everything. So. Watch out. Yeah. Uh, he said it is just sort of a blast from the past. There's a whole manual which he uh, sent, and uh, um, both, uh, uh, let's see, uh, you can hook it up. Oh, there's a PDP, PIDP 11 Google group. He says a few of the old timers in there, some of the designers of the PDP 11. Uh. He did a lot of software archaeology, he calls it, to get this working. And yes, yeah, it comes uh, running um, a PDP emulator. On the Raspberry Pi, so that's that's pretty sweet, and I Very. love I, these. This is fine. The demo program, <laughs> it's, it's, fine. it's done. It's done. <laughs> I don't need to enter in any blinking lights. I got the blinking light. I'm gonna leave it right there in front of you. 